Amen. Thank you, Barbara and Choir, for that special anthem this morning. <clears throat> it's amazing how well that anthem is going to go along with my sermon, and we didn't even coordinate that. It's just amazing how the Holy Spirit works on Sunday mornings. That's, uh, that's amazing, and what a great message. Thank you so much for that today. Well, one of my favorite Beatles songs is the song, Help. Have you ever heard the song, Help? before by the Beatles. It's a great song. If you haven't heard it, go home after church, get online, and you can listen to it, and you'll love it just like I do. And I was thinking about that. Is there any doubt that people need help in this life? I don't think any of us can argue with that, can we? We know that uh, those times in our own lives when we've needed help, uh, we know those times in the lives of those we love when they have needed help, friends and family or our spouse, our kids, our grandkids, we all need help from time to time in life. Now, I still love going into a physical bookstore. I know everybody shops on Amazon and I do a lot of that now, but I love to go into a physical bookstore and when you do, you'll find a gigantic self-help section. There are so many books in the self-help section. The self-help industry is like a billion dollar industry. And what does that tell us today? That tells us that people are looking for help. And they are willing to look wherever they can to find that help. They'll read the latest bestseller. They'll watch the, the, the latest video. They'll listen to the latest podcast, all in hopes of finding help and self-improvement. Now, why is that? Why are people looking for help? Because life is difficult, right? Life is hard. This, this whole thing is not easy, is it? Relationships, school, jobs, fitting in, social media life, medical problems, financial woes, friendships, retirement life. It can all be very hard. I remember when I was younger, I would see older adults living their lives, and I would think, wow, I bet they've got it all figured out. I would look at my teachers and my parents and my youth director, my children's director, and I would always think they have it all together because they're older. And what I didn't know at the time was that, no, they did not have it all together, but I didn't get to see that part, did I? I was too young to see that part. And then when I started growing older myself, I figured out that I didn't have it all together either, and I still don't. So just getting older doesn't give you all the, all, all the magical answers that you need for life. We all need help. Writer Anne Lamont says that there are three essential prayers that all of us pray in life. She says that all of our prayer life can be summed up in these three prayers. And they are help, thanks, and wow. Help, thanks, and wow. Well, luckily, we are not the first people to need help in life. In the Bible, in the book of Psalms, they, they are full of psalms of, of cries of people needing help. And our scripture today is going to be one of them. So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to join me in Psalm 121 as we hear God's word in this place. Scripture says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. So I want you to try to envision this scenario in your minds today. Uh, say, say you lived back in the ancient time of Israel, and you want to take a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. God is important to you. Your faith is important to you. So a trip to the temple makes sense. Well, that trip would not be an easy trip. The trip would be through the desert. It was going to be hot. There would be criminals who were lurking in places to try and, and take you over, jump you, and they might ambush you. And you would often pay to, to sleep in these encampments, these guarded encampments where, where these guards would watch over you at night. But you would always go to sleep wondering 
if the guards would be able to do their jobs and really keep you safe. And the question on your mind would be this, where does my help come from? That's a perfectly reasonable question to ask in those circumstances because life was hard, those situations were hard, and you would need help. And you would look to the hills around you, the mountains around you, and you would wonder where your help would come from. Now, the very interesting thing is that this psalm is also written as a call and response psalm. So you as the pilgrim would ask that question, where does my help come from? And then somebody else in the group would answer, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then their answer would become your answer. Their faith and their strength would start to suffice for your own. Now, I love that idea of someone else answering that question for us when we're going through a difficult time in life. I mean, sometimes we can't see straight, can we? Sometimes we can't think correctly. Sometimes we get off track and we can't get our theology right. But it's then that the congregation, the church, the people rally around us and they say, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's why being a part of the church is so important. We don't always have the right answers, do we? We don't always have the strength that we need. We don't always have the sight to see what God is doing. But guess who does? The church your brothers and sisters in Christ, your friends in the church. And so this psalm is a great reminder that we need those people and we need this place. We can't go through this alone. It's why we need one another. It's why we need the church to speak this truth over us when we can't see it for ourselves, that God is our helper, that God is on our side. So our main truth today is this, those who walk with God never walk alone. Those who walk with God never walk alone. And I don't know if there's any message that I've ever needed to hear more when I need help. When I'm going through a tough time, when my life is hard, I'm reminded that I don't go alone. Because when I'm following after God, when I'm seeking after Him, and even when I stumble and fall, I never walk alone. Does that bring any encouragement to y'all today? Like it does to me, that those who walk with God never walk alone? It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Almost a little too simple, but we found this to be true in our own lives. And it's usually easier to, to look back on what God has done after you get through something than it is when you're currently going through something. But when we look back, we see how God was with us. We see that we don't walk alone, that God is our helper, that God is the one who gets us through those difficult times in life, that God is there for us even when we have not always been there for him. Isn't that awesome? Now, uh, do we have anybody here who loves the outdoors? Any outdoorsmen out there? It looks like a few of y'all maybe. Uh, Shockingly, I am not an outdoorsman. I know that's not going to surprise anybody in the room. And so I can't imagine a scenario more scary than being lost in the woods and having no idea where to go. Just that idea is terrifying. It makes me go into a cold sweat thinking about it. I was not a Boy Scout growing up, so I couldn't rub two sticks together and start a fire. I wouldn't know what berries to eat or which ones to stay away from. I would not know, you know how to look at the sun or look at the nighttime sky and figure out which way I needed to go. I would be utterly and terribly alone out there with no idea what to do. Now, what this psalm reminds us here is that God will never leave us like that as we go through life that we will never really be alone, that we will not have to walk by ourselves, that we will never have to figure out our way forward all alone. Because God is with us. Because God is near. Because God is close. This shows us a lot about the character and nature of our God, doesn't it? We learn that this God is not a distant God because a distant God doesn't help. A unconcerned and cold God doesn't help. An unfriendly God doesn't help. So good thing that's not what we have, right? Our God is a helper. 
Now, we don't get all of the vivid details of what this help is going to look like. I wish we did. Uh, Wouldn't it be cool if your Bible had an index and you could turn to the back of your Bible and find out whatever you were going through. And it would say, turn to page 455 and this is exactly how God is going to help you out of that situation. This is exactly what God is going to do. It would be fantastic if that's how it worked, but we know that we don't have all the details. We don't get all of the specifics, but what we do receive are promises. Promises of help, promises of protection, promises of presence, promises of God not leaving us alone. This psalm here calls us towards trust. We're not the ones who can help ourselves But we can trust in the one who can help us. And we really have no other choice, do we? Now, there's a word here that the writer uses throughout the psalm for God's activity. And depending on what translation you're reading, the word is keeper or helper or preserver or watcher or protector. And that's who God is, y'all. He is all of those things and so much more. And I think about the word protector. When I hear that word, I can't help but think of a superhero. I love superheroes. I love to read comic books or watch superhero movies. And and the superheroes are always the ones who are the protectors. They're protecting different people. They're protecting different cities and taking care of the whole planet. They are the protectors. Batman is my favorite superhero, and Batman is the greatest superhero. You can't argue with me after church about that because Batman, he's, he's the best. He is the number one in my book. And if you know anything about Batman, his place of protection was Gotham City. That's where he took care of the people. And I remember in one of the movies, Batman was uh, taking care of Gotham City when Gotham City was attacked by this evil villain named Bane. And, and Bane fought Batman, and he ended up breaking him and destroying him. And, and Bane was taunting Batman, and he said, yes, I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your body. Bane thinks he's won the day. Bane thinks he's won the victory, but Batman comes back. And he gets a second chance, as he always does, and Batman wins the day that time, and he saves the city. Because, of course he does. He's Batman, right? But I thought about God. God's spirit can never be broken. He's never defeated. Nothing can take God out of commission. He's always here. He's always with us. He's always for us. He's always our helper. The writer says here that he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. That's good news. Do y'all need sleep? I need sleep. Guess who doesn't? God. God doesn't need sleep. God is always awake. He's always on the case. And we should take great comfort in those words today. Because with God on our side, nothing can truly break us. Nothing can truly overcome us. Now, when I hear this psalm, I can't help but think of another famous psalm, Psalm 23. And we all know that psalm. We've all heard it growing up. And if you think about the King James Version, there's some images in that psalm that we all hold in our hearts to this day. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are words of promise, right? Words of assurance. Words that mean something to us when we need help. And did you know that that looking for help and praying for help ultimately comes to fruition in the coming of Jesus Christ into our world? He is the answer to our cry for help. As Jesus comes in the flesh to show us God's love and to free us from sin and to lead us into new life. He comes to help us with all the trouble that we've gotten into in life. He's come to to fix the world, to make humanity new. He's come to make us into children of God and give us hope and meaning and purpose for this life and in the life to come. In the Bible, John says that we have all received grace upon grace from Jesus. 
and that's a good thing because we need grace. We're all sinners. We've all rebelled against God. We've all turned away from God. But Jesus comes to bring us grace. He comes to bridge that gap. And Jesus then goes on to call himself two titles. He calls himself the good shepherd and the light of the world. Well, guess what we need when we need help? We need a shepherd, don't we? We need somebody who's going to lead the way, somebody who can protect us from all harm. This is what the psalmist was hoping for and praying for. We need someone to, to light the way in front of us so that we can see where to go. Jesus is saying that this is exactly what we have in him. In fact, in John's gospel, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Isn't that great? Jesus lays down his life to give us eternal life, and then he holds us in his hand, and nothing can snatch us away from him. Sometimes in life when it feels like we're drowning or when we're failing, sometimes when things are difficult, when life is hard and we need help, remember this truth from Jesus, that in him we shall never perish, that no one will snatch us out of the hands of Christ. Again, in John's gospel, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If you've ever been in need of light when you're in a dark place, you know how important light can be. Did y'all ever have a night light when you were growing up? I had a night light in my room. I could not sleep without it. I couldn't sleep in a dark room. I had to have my night light on so there was some light going on in the room. And I still don't love a dark room even today. A night light was a fantastic thing. Maybe I need to go buy a Batman night light for my room today and I could put that in there. But there's a reason why I value light when I was a little kid. I didn't want to be in the dark. And because of Jesus, we will never have to be. We have the light of life. He is now lighting our way, and he is leading us and guiding us, and we will never have to walk in darkness. I was thinking about that phrase, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why is that phrase so important? Maybe because it's the, the very foundation of our faith. The Apostles' Creed that we said just a little while ago opens with these words, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. This God that we're talking about is the God who made the world and everything in it. And the God who made the world has not walked away from the world and left us down here alone. No, the God who made the world loves the world and he wants to save the world. The God who made the world is our helper and protector. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, you may be just like uh, some of those pilgrims that I was talking about earlier, those pilgrims who were taking the journey to Jerusalem, and you may be worrying in your own life. You may be wondering about the problems that you're going through. You may be in that time of difficulty yourself. And you may not be able to answer for yourself that question of where does my help come from. But today, the church can surround you. The church can rally around you and answer for you. Our help is in the Lord. And our protector never rests. And the Lord will keep us from all evil. In fact, why don't we say these three phrases out loud together. Let's, let's proclaim these truths over each other. So y'all repeat after me. Our help comes from the Lord. Our protector never rests. The Lord will keep you from all evil. May we truly hear those words today and believe them. And may we truly learn to trust in the Lord. Day by day and moment by moment, he will keep us from all harm as we trust in him. If you're going through a tough time, I invite you to ask for God's help when you need it. Ask for it. Look for it. Expect it. Look on how God has helped you in the past. 
And then lean on others around you and don't try to go through it by yourself. Look to the Lord and His strength. Look to the Lord and His assurance. And nothing that we ever face in life can snatch us away from Him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.